Welcome everyone to this Akadashi presentation of the 26 qualities of a pure devotee, our dear Srila Prabhupada being the, the exa example, the emblem, the demonstrator, and the teacher. And I think that's that's the, the aim of, of our series, especially just to, to appreciate uh, Srila Prabhupada's qualities, but also to learn. Uh, how he he demonstrated these and apply them in our lives. So again, I'm very very pleased to have with us Siddhanta Prabhu, the uh, the producer of the Memories uh, series of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, let's let's see what we have to, we have today. We have uh, I think we're we're on the twelfth quality, right? That yes, number twelve, which is he is always surrendered to Krishna. Always surrendering. That's certainly something to want to emulate. <laughs> Got to do that. And then, you know, when I was thinking of different stories that will give us evidence as to Prabhupada's, certainly th that nature of his, which is and always was actually being surrendered to Krishna, we can, there will be a story that exemplifies or gives evidence to that fact. But the uh, definition that I found from the Webster's Dictionary. So we can kind of like understand what the real meaning is, is how as to what our stories will represent, is that surrender is to cease resistance and submit to an authority. Very nice. And further evidence of surrender is by the development of a direct loving relationship where each party is fulfilling the desire of the other. Mm. Where there's no selfishness or that is that love that you surrender. And, so hopefully we'll see that example of Prabhupada always wanting to serve his spiritual master and to fulfill Krishna's desire to, you know, spread Krishna consciousness. So that's going to be the focus of today's stories. Wonderful. Wonderful. And today we'll hear from eight different devotees, if we have time okay. to squeeze them all in. Bhavananda, Hridayananda, Madhusudana, Malati, Sachinandana Swami, Aditi Devidasi, Shama Shunder, and Ram Shraddha. Okay. Who I interviewed in Mayapur at the library there. Hmm. So let's hear from Bhavananda. He said, I have so many palaces all over the world that I can stay in. He said, practically speaking, there's no difference between me and the Goswamis in terms of our lifestyle, he said, they stayed under a different tree every night. I stay in a different palace every night. They wrote, I write. He said, originally, I did not want to come here. He said, Krish not to America, but to this world. He said, Krishna asked, I want you to write those books. Come down and write those books. And I said, I don't want to come to that. I don't want to go to that material world. And he said, Krishna said, don't you worry. I'll take care of everything. You write those books. That was the first and only time that I've ever heard or read, I might be wrong, where Prabhupada actually spoke about Krishna speaking to him and how he didn't want to go. And he made that face, you know, that, you know, his upper lip kind of, I did not want to go to that world. He said, I will take care of everything. You just come down and write those books. The atmosphere when he said that it was just, you know, it was like nothing I've ever experienced ever. Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's quite a uh, quite a story. Quite a story. That's surrender. 
He didn't want to that's come, but he, he said, is. okay, I'll, really I is. surrender. And yeah. he came. Yeah. Yeah, however, yeah, that's a uh, Hare Krishna. So that's uh, certainly a, a, lead, a good leadoff story that uh, gives mm -hmm. evidence of Prabhupada's surrender to Krishna's desire. And we're thankful for that, absolutely thankful and grateful for Prabhupada coming. The next story is from Ridainanda Maharaj, who also will give us uh, evidence as to Prabhupada's, Srila Prabhupada's position and his uh, relationship with Krishna and how it mm. just didn't happen uh, overnight. So let's get right into it and listen to Ridainanda. We were in Prabhupada's room uh, once, oh, in the early 70s. I was sannyasi, so maybe 73, 74. And uh, probably it was a beautiful afternoon. The sun was setting and golden rays were shining on the prowl, but it was very sublime. A nice breeze was blowing. It was a very beautiful atmosphere. And uh, Prabhupada took us back to old India, the turn of the century. And uh, when he was a child, when he was a young householder, and he took us there actually, and he began to talk about how people used to work and relationships between uh, householders and their servants and how people used to cook and things. So there we were back in India with Prabhupada. And then he took us back farther to his early childhood when he was playing with, uh, not playing, but having the Rathiyatra and worshiping Radha Govinda. And then uh, only Karanda and I were in the room. And Prabhupada looked at us very strongly and said, uh, whatever I'm doing now, I was doing then. Do you understand? And of course, we were at that point kind of speechless. And then Prabhupada said, Never was there a time when I did not know Krishna. Do you understand? And uh, he said it in such a way that it was clearly the case. <laughs> so that was uh, a very powerful experience. Yes, this is uh, certainly the always element uh, of uh, surrender is coming out very strongly. It is uh, all, it's not only, okay, today I'm surrendering. And uh, but then the next moment I'm not, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, I surrender to you, Krishna, and then something else happens, and oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we but, get yeah, diverted. That, yeah, diverted. But this, this, uh, this brings out this the, the always surrender to Krishna. Exactly. Now let's hear from Madhusudana Prabhu, who we lost uh, sadly a few months ago. Yes. Yes. Uh, great devotee was with Prabhupada and his wife Kanchambala early days in New York. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. one of the earliest disciples. Yeah. And this story and, and the next few stories will be a representation of how that relationship, when one is surrendered, how the other person that, in this case, Krishna, who Prabhupada is surrendering to, fulfills desires from his pure devotee. Mm. So let's listen to Madhusudana. One time I was in the temple room, it was after Prashadam. Uh, in the early days, uh, devotees would take Prashadam, the, the, the Prashadam would be cooked upstairs in Prabhupada's apartment and brought downstairs and devotees would eat in the temple. We had these grass mats that we'd lay out and plates was a really uh, cacophony of, of plates that were gotten at thrift stores and so on. They were porcelain plates, nothing matched. Um, and so the plates had to be washed afterwards. So I was in the temple and the plates were all in the sink. And in the, in the temple, this was a, a storefront that was opened up and in the back there was a little bathroom and a little outside a little sink and the plates were all piled up there and the plates were not washed and i was in the temple alone i might have been chanting japa or reading i don't remember just i just happened to be there and who comes in Prabhupada co walks in and offer my obeisances and then he saw in the in the sink all these dishes, and he said, "What? Why aren't these dishes done?" And of course, I was left standing. I didn't 
know what to say, but he said, well, if, he said, if it's, no one's going to do it, then I'll do it. Well, naturally, of course, I got, I got with the program. But Prabhupada was prepared to do, to do that, just wash the dishes. This reminds me of uh, another of Srila Prabhupada's sayings, do the needful. <laughs> you know, it's a, that's another aspect of being always surrendered, being always prepared to do whatever is needed at the time to please Krishna. Right. And, uh, certainly a pile of dirty dishes was not pleasing to Krishna, and he was uh, ready to do the needful. Yeah, so on two sides, he was uh, willing to surrender and do this, the, the dirty dishes, clean them himself. But at the same time, we see that when a devotee did come up and offer, he was, you know, could see that that was Krishna sending that, sending them, yeah, that devotee yeah. to help, and uh, yeah. so that uh, relationship with Prabhupada and Krishna was always there, satisfying mm. each other's desire. Mm. So in that same vein, let's listen to Malati Dasi, mm. an early story, again how Prabhupada is praying to Krishna. Uh, to fulfill his desire to push on the movement mm. and, and for his devotees. So let's listen to Malati. One other time I had another experience with him. But, I mean, some these are what you can call like mystical experiences. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Shamsundra and I had to go to prison at one point, and we were actually supposed to be in prison for like five years. And um, somehow we just couldn't believe it would happen, but we had to go. And then after 24 days, we actually got out. And we got down to San Francisco, we were up in Seattle. And Prabhupada had arrived while we were in prison. And it was totally inexplicable, our release. And we got out, and Kundu and all the devotees were at the airport when we arrived. And they said, hurry up, you know, Prabhupada's here. So we ran home, got changed, and went in, you know, and I remember I went up, and at this point he was in Carl Street knocked on his door and he said, Oh, Malati, come in. Just last night I was thinking five years was too much. And I just like knew immediately, because even the parole officer did not know why we were getting out. She said, if I, I, she said, because I was hesitating to sign the paper, I didn't know what it was, and she goes, it's your release. Was, I'm signing it fast, and she goes, I don't know why, because I wouldn't have approved this. It went over my head. She was really didn't like that. So it was amazing. Probably I was just thinking last night, five years was too much. And then he handed me a sari. He had just come back from India. And he says to the, I think it was Upendra or Kartikeya, bring, bring that. And it was his case. And he pulls in and he pulls out a sari. And he gave me a sari. And it was a white Bengali sari with a green and, and a red border. <laughs> I remember that. This is uh, this, like you said, the surrender. When the when the surrender reaches its uh, uh, full of love, then uh, the uh, the reciprocation becomes uh, complete. Yeah, Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. In the same vein, let's listen to Sachinandana Swami, who will. Tell us about a, a very unique experience he had with understanding who Prabhupada is. The second very moving encounter with Srila Prabhupada was indirect. I was uh, at that time having the service to wash uh, Lord uh, Nashishi Radha London Ishwara's um, Maha plates. Uh, you must know that at that time, Shila, when we all took our morning breakfast prasadam, Srila Prabhupada, uh, and the temple was empty, Srila Prabhupada went downstairs and stood for quite a lengthy time before the deities and prayed to them, alone, without anyone being there. Um, he would take his darshan and pray and then go back into his room. Uh, I had the service in the morning to wash the deity dishes, and because so many thoughts were going on in my mind, now I have decided to surrender. What will be the consequences? 
um, my girlfriend to whom I was promised in marriage had come to uh, convince me to take up my old ways. Uh, my grandfather was dying at that time and requested me to come to his deathbed where he would ask me to give up Krishna consciousness. And uh, I was in turmoil because in our family it, uh, you had to agree to the wish of a dying man. But I could not agree to give up what I thought is finally the, the grace of the Lord on me. So I stayed in the temple and I was in turmoil for various reasons. And I did not do a good uh, job in cleaning the uh, Maha uh, plates. One morning, as I was there washing the Maha plates, being totally on the mental platform, um, the temple president came into the mm, kitchen. His head was red. And he stammered. He said, Prabhupada, uh, uh, he had darshan, and he uh, uh, said that Krishna told him that the plates are not uh, 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 nicely cleansed. There is still the old uh, 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 offering sticking to the plates. And he really said, uh, whoever wishes the dishes has to do a good job from now onwards. This really woke me up from my dreaming. I was responsible. I had uh, pondered over uh, deeply um, important issues at that time, but had not performed my service accurately and nicely. <laughs> and uh, Krishna had complained to Srila Prabhupada. There was no other way than Krishna telling Prabhupada, because you know when you have a dirty plate and you put um, the offering, maybe because it has to go so hurriedly on the altar, uh, then the old remnants are covered with the new offering. So uh, the only way a person who can detect this is either the cook, but he was too fast, uh, or uh, uh, the one who eats uh, everything. <laughs> and uh, uh, this uh, personality, Lord Krishna had told Srila Prabhupada. So I was very much moved. It was a very, uh, I was very happy to hear this, that uh, there is a direct connection between Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna, and became very uh, inspired to surrender. Uh, my life to Srila Prabhupada. Mm. Jai, Jai, Jai. That is so curious. That's such a wonderful story. And just day before yesterday, uh, we had a reunion here in New York uh -huh. a few days ago. Uh, and one devotee recounted when Srila Prabhupada came to New York, this was just after I think Bhavananda had come over from Los Angeles. To, uh, to take on the temple presidency. And in Los Angeles, they had started to go out to the wee hours of the night doing Sankirtan and, and so on. And so he started doing that here. And, but they wanted to come back and just have Mangal Arti and then go to sleep. <laughs> so they moved the Mangal Arti to four o'clock and Srila Prabhupada came. And afterwards he called and said, uh, Govinda is tired. Right. He knew. <laughs> He's, he was missing out. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, this relationship is... I think that's a category, Siddhanta, one time we're going to have to see you know, all the, the interactions, Srila Prabhupada and, and the deities. Yeah, all the, the, the different all the miracles. times. Right. Yeah. Well, in that same vein... Let us listen to Aditi Devi Dasi, ah, okay. who will give another prime example of that very same type of anecdote and uh, learning lesson about Prabhupada's direct connection with Krishna. And then finally, Prabhupada comes to Delhi from Vrindavan. And uh, I was cooking for Prabhupada. And uh, well, before the cooking, I have to tell you I would, how I dressed the deities because there was a fan that went right on the deities. 
And I don't know what I was thinking of. I was thinking, oh, you know, I don't want Krishna's peacock feather to fall, or this or that, or the hair. I, I, so I moved the fan off the deities to the side. And Prabhupada came like 10 o'clock in the morning. He offered his obeisances, and he walked through the temple room, by the kitchen, the courtyard, and then his room was there. So then I cooked for Prabhupada, and I was really like so conscious. You know when you're doing right. You know when you're really conscious of what you're doing. And I think it was Sri Tikirti, he came back, he says, oh, Prabhupada says the rice isn't cooked. And I, I thought, oh, that's not possible, you know, I mean, I knew I did it exactly right, but, you know, well. So then he came back to get another japati, and then he says, oh, Prabhupada just hasn't had good quality rice in a long time. In Vrindavan he had very poor quality, so this is very nice quality, it's very good, he said. So anyway, Prabhupada, you know, I, I knew it was good and Prabhupada appreciated the prasadam. But that evening I did Arctic. And before I was doing Arctic, I'd look and I'd see Prabhupada in his room and he had his glasses on and he had his books. And he, there was always a special absorption, I guess, a special mood when Prabhupada would be reading the scriptures. And then I finished Arctic, I was washing the Arctic thing and I see Prabhupada pass by. And we had a little tiny dinky Vyasasan. I mean, I didn't think Prabhupada would ever sit on it, but Prabhupada sat down on it. And so I finished what I was doing, and we were six or eight devotees, not a lot. And the first thing Prabhupada says is, Krishna is feeling hot. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> how does Prabhupada know, you know? He said something about the, the, is, the fan isn't cooling or something. And so he gave a whole lecture on Krishna, the deity, is Krishna himself. And as soon as I could, whew, I put the fan back on Krishna. And I just, I realized, you know, Krishna is personally present with Prabhupada and speaks with him and tells him things. And, you know, it, it was a real eye-opener for me. Uh. This quality, the way you're bringing out the quality of surrender and in, in its ultimate of that, that direct relationship is, is beautiful. Right. Yeah, it's they're amazing stories. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, you can't deny these stories, you know, the, no, it's, that it's, happened it's, in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was able to capture their uh, experience with Prabhupada and uh, giving us living proof that Prabhupada and Krishna are, are like this. Yeah. So uh, it, it increases our faith. Mm. That's the desire, you know. That's what I, I hope to uh, have uh, these anecdotes uh, bring out our faith that uh, we are following <laughs> the right person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, in that same regard, let's hear from Shama Shundar Prabhu, who mm. uh, has the most unique, one of the most unique stories. This is definitely a classic, where Prabhupada asked him to do something, or Shamashundra was reticent to do it. Prabhupada told Shamashundra, don't worry, because he was hesitant. He said, uh, don't worry, Krishna will help you. So let's listen to mm. Shamashundra explain that particular story. One time, Prabhupada did call me in his room, and he said, you know, we only have one book. We have Bhagavad Gita. That's it. And maybe there was an act of devotion, but he said, I have, Krishna book has been finished now for some time, and I, I got news today that uh, it's ready for publication. How can we publish? We need this book. He said, I want you to go and ask George for the money for this book. So then um, I said, oh, no, Prabhupada. I said, you know, I, 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 the reason that we're this far with George, and he's helped us so much to date, is that I've never asked him for anything. I always wait until he offers. And he says, yes, he said, but we really need this. And I said, well, how much is it? $19,000. In those days, that was like saying $100,000. <sighs> so I said, I don't, I don't really think it's a good idea, Prabhupada. And he said, yes, yes, it is. You, you'll see, Krishna will help you. Watch this. So the next day, we had made arrangements to go look at marble. He had, George had donated, or said he would donate a slab of marble for the... Uh, for the, what was it? Yeah, a new slab of marble for the altar. Yeah. 
at Berry Place Altar. Or maybe it was for Bhaktivedanta Manor. I don't remember. But it was a big slab of marble. And to help us select this marble, he had called on his friend David Wynne, who was the sculptor laureate of England, a very famous sculptor who designed the coinage and did those famous uh, busts of Queen Elizabeth and, and of the Beatles, too. That's how I knew him. So we went over to, uh, we went with David Wynne to the marble yards and selected the marble. And afterwards, we went to uh, David Wynne's house for dinner. And all this time, I was, I was trying to screw up my courage because I had one mission that day. <laughs> how am I going to ask George for this money? He's curious. He is on giving us this three or four thousand pound slab of marble. And how can I ask him for something more on top of that today? So we got to the dinner and we were all finished with, with eating and uh, it was getting late at night, it was dark. And I was a long ways in Wimbledon, a long ways from London, I still had to go. And so did George, he had to go all the way out to some place, uh, suburbs. So finally I just did. I said, George, uh, you know, Shri, Shri, I, I made Prabhupada the bad guy. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada asked me to ask you if you would print, or donate money to print a Krishna book. And I explained what Krishna book was. And his face just increasingly got grimmer and grimmer. And I could see this whole thing passing through his face of, oh man, they're just another one of these groups. Here it comes. And he said, how much? How, and no, and, and, and on and on. And then it, the room went quiet for a moment. Well, he thought about it and looked at me and fixed me with this really belligerent stare. And suddenly the lights went out. All the lights in the house went out, and wham! This, this bolt of lightning hit the house. A true story. The whole house shook. It hit the house. The sound and the light were simultaneous. <laughs> and we sat in silence for some minutes after that, stunned. The lights came back on. I looked over at George and he had this huge grin on his face. He said, well, how much is it then? <laughs> and I told him and he says, well, what can I do after that? You know? Then he came the next day and talked for a part about it. Krishna will help you. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna will help you. Right? <laughs> The Lord of the universe. Yeah, how much more evidence um, do you need? Yeah. <laughs> there is a God. <laughs> um, and he's watching. <laughs> beautiful. So beautiful. So that's definitely a classic story that yes, it is. will it increase is. our faith and make us smile at simultaneously. Mm. This last story is now from Ram Shraddha Prabhu. Mm -hmm. You may know him from my Yes, I do. My yeah. This is another direct evidence as he was there with Prabhupada in his final, final days uh -huh. yes. that will epitomize the example of surrender mm. that mm. we're all really striving for. So mm. let's listen to Ram Shraddha. I was having the service of being in Vrindavan and I was in charge of the kitchen and Ayodhya who is Govinda Bringa Maharaj, he was the cook. So Prabhupada left, so everybody went to his room because I, I was doing service, but I had no time to go to Prabhupada's room because, you know, I'm too busy with my service. Somebody has to finish the cooking, prasadam has to be taken care of, devotees are coming. So this is more important than sitting with Prabhupada in his room, you know, if Prabhupada wants. But the last three hours I was next to Prabhupada sitting. His bed, was head was there and I was sitting here and uh, I, I was feeling little uncomfortable even to touch Prabhupada and do the last massage. You know, at that time he was easily available to everybody. But I was very shy. I thought, why wow, I'm so fallen. How can I touch Prabhupada and give him massage? Let me just do kirtan in the rest of the devotees. And I was, I was very carefully observing his lips. And Prabhupada opened two times the mouth. Hare Krishna, that was it. There was only two times. But I could... I could see very clearly it was Hare Krishna, and that was it. He Prabhupada left just by saying Hare Krishna. Right. Yes, always surrendered to the last breath. Hare Krishna. 
Yeah, if we can follow in those footsteps, remain always surrendered, become always surrendered. Right. But uh, that's it for this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, next yeah. And next Akadashi, we will focus on number quality number 13, which is defined as he has the Vaishnav, perfect gentleman, has no material desires, which ah, is similar sure. to uh, another one uh, that we spoke of a few weeks ago about he has no possessions. So right. I'll, I'll yes. try to come up with some new stories that uh, okay. will, will represent that quality. Good. Anyway, thank you. Great. For thank you. you. Thank appreciate, you, Sanatha. Appreciate your Thanks again to, to all the audience and uh, being with us today. Uh, I hope this has helped in your meditation on the qualities of a devotee and on Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. 